Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Observable Flutter. I'm your host, Craig LeBenz, and today we are going to be looking at some submissions for the Doodle Dash Challenge for 17 Days of Flutter. I am hearing myself. Okay. I've taken care of that. Uh, so I'm excited. There are some pretty fun additions. Uh, that were There are pretty fun little implementations, changes to the game that folks submitted. Uh, so I'm excited to get into it. Um, so let's handle all the opening shenanigans. First of all, folks, remember that uh, this is the Flutter community, and we are operating under the Flutter community code of conduct. So... We're gonna, we've got to treat each other with respect, uh, especially today. We're going to be looking at different submissions from uh, folks in the community. And, you know, we definitely want to be treating everyone, talking about everyone's stuff with, with great respect, uh, inclusive to everyone, all that good stuff. Uh, so uh, let me pull up everything here. Okay. Uh, so the first thing. Oh, where's my terminal? Terminal, come to me. Uh, <laughs> here we go. All right, just getting everything organized here. Um, oh, that window appears twice. There's my confusion. All right. All right. Let's switch to see all the things. And I'll make this font bigger. So a handful of you submitted uh, implementations, changes to the game. Some of you emailed that code to Khan. And uh, your submissions are live on the site. Actually, let me pull that up. That would be great to look at here. Uh, <laughs> What is it? Flutter.dev, 17 days of Flutter. Doodle dash challenge. Yeah, here we go. So there's a bunch that came in. What's going on here? Oh, I clicked one, and it's a link to Twitter. Well, as Khan says, so creative. She loves it, especially the spinached up green dash, which we may... Uh, look at today as we go because uh, I've pulled some of these down if I could find the source code that was uh, I wanted to be able to run these locally and then maybe just kind of look at some of the changes and admire what folks were done so or had done so I don't have the source code for all of these on hand some I reached out to folks on Twitter um, and you know asked for git repos and whatnot and other other people just sent their stuff in to con so um, just glancing at the chat real quick. Looks like folks are ready to uh, look at some, some submissions here. So I keep doing it. I keep clicking the thing. All right. So these are the ones that I have. And I think maybe we'll just go in order. I don't know how many we'll get to, uh, but we'll find out together. So the, oh, wait, why did I close that window? That was a real bad decision. I should have kept it open in a different space because then we can reference the list. So the first person alphabetically whose source code I have is Kong Win Tons. And hopefully I'm saying that close to correctly. Um, but I just really loved the kind of Mario Kart inspired banana peel situation going on here. And I think there's going to be a lot of juicy stuff to look at in this one. So I'm really excited. Um, and let's, uh, let's give it a peek. So I'm going to CD into that directory, which is a checkout of their code. And we can just see here, you know, it's the PubSpec lib, all the good stuff folder. So I'm going to run Flutter, run on Mac OS. Uh, Abdallah says, will Flutter have Flutter Studio for dragging and dropping widgets? 
so, uh oh, what what happened here? What? I've just I I ran some of these previously to make sure that they ran and it did run. What is the problem here? Maybe a Flutter clean. Flutter clean. Try again. Uh, so like an Xcode kind of thing, like a WYSIWYG drag and drop. Uh, now the Google team does not have any plans for this currently, but there are a lot of versions of this uh, springing up around the community. There's zap.run, which I have not used. And I think it is similar to this. Um, there is, oh, who gave the talk? There, in the keynote, in the keynote, there was a product demoed. How am I blanking on this? Uh, was it zap.run? I don't know. In the keynote, there was a thing. And I have uh, on stream brain right now, so I can't think of it. But that is all, that is exactly what you're thinking of. Super robust, really strong. Um, but no, probably not going to be implemented by uh, the Google team directly. Uh, oh yeah, Flutter Flow, that's what it was. Adam, amazing. And Widget Book, yes. So there are several out there that exist. Uh, thank you for reminding me of Flutter Flow, goodness gracious. All right, uh, we've done a Flutter Clean and let's run the build command again and hopefully we'll have better luck. We didn't even get this text last time. It was just all red text. So we seem to be doing better. <laughs> uh, Raf Raf asks, when the Flutter package registry will be enabled for GitLab? And I sadly don't know because I have never used GitLab. So I'm not sure what the issue is there or what conversations are happening. But um, continue to ask people that question. All right. So we are looking at Kong's game here. And I the normally I pick Dash, so I'm going to pick Sparky this time. OK. So look at this delightful effect. I almost already lost. When you hit a banana peel, you lose control. So I can't even steer right now. Until you start going down, I think that's kind of how the, the rules work here. So there's going to be some interesting logic. We'll see how this was implemented. I'm just going to try to go find another banana peel. All of a sudden, you can't find one. All right, so yeah, can't can't do anything until you kind of reach the apex of the arc there, and then you get control again. So, um, I mean, goodness, that is that is really neat. Uh, so let's let's give this a look by opening this up in VS Code, and we'll see what we see. Um, full screen. Let's open the lib directory here and see what kind of new stuff we can find. Actually, I think I also have their Git directory here. We might be able to look at some commits. Yeah, let me try to do this as well. So this is their repo. And I'm on, do what? Okay, I'm on the correct branch. So let's basically just look at their commits and see what we can get. All right, so they are adding some sprites. Oh, implementing banana stuff. Yeah, these are going to be pretty good. Um, is this going to tell us everything in this diff here? We're getting a lot of new assets. Oh, no. These are, OK, here we go. Yeah, yeah, nice. All right. Yeah, because this this whole link here points back to the main, which is uh, just perfect for us. OK, so in Doodle Dash, they're oh, making the world not private. I wonder uh, what that was for. I wonder if that's more than they just didn't want to look at that underscore. Actually, you know what? I'm not 100% sure that this code I'm looking at is all new to this implementation because maybe add power up, maybe add enemy. I'm trying to find anything in here about a banana. I don't think I'm actually looking at the correct stuff. This is not right. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think so. Let me switch back to chat and see if anyone knows what I'm doing wrong. 
No, that's okay though. Uh, all right, we'll, we'll just look at it in um, in VS Code. I'm going to look for a banana. There we go. Hope we get the banana class. Class banana in tool.dart. All right. So this code was all, uh, I don't know when it was added, but let's see here. So there's this base class tool, banana extends it. So here's where the sprite came in. And so we can just kind of see, I think it's positioned relative. You know, let's see, where does the banana get added? They, they all sat above a platform. So you kind of have to hit them as you go down to, to bounce off a platform. So in add, yeah, here's where a banana is being added. Let's see, what are you being added to? Ah, object manager. Yeah, nice. So any object can have, when there's different tools. Oh, that's interesting. I'm not sure if that was in the other thing or not, but you know, this kind of looks. All right, so it only goes on normal platforms with a probability of 15%. And then we add a platform. All right, so now I want to see the, the collision. I want to see a, how does Dash react to this platform. Oh, I should make this code bigger. Yeah, there we go. We'll do this for the whole rest of the time. Oh, wait a minute, folks. We've got a special guest. My sister. Hi, Tiff. How you doing? <laughs> Are you ready to learn about Flutter? Who would have thought? Family showing up to support. Tiff, I hope you're having a good morning. Uh, so I want to see what happens when the when the character hits the banana. Because that there's a pretty cool effect there of you know, Dash or Sparky like spinning and flying off in a crazy direction and, and controls being interrupted for a while. Uh, so I think that stuff's going to be pretty interesting. And was that in player? Yeah, player.dart. So remember, if you watched, you know, if you've dealt with uh, Flame at all yourself, or if you watched uh, the previous Observable Flutter or the live Boring Show with Khan where we were working on this, then you may have seen how collision detection happens in flame and it's in this aptly named on collision method so in here there's a lot of code that's in all of these games because dash jumps up when she hits one of those platforms but here we should yeah yeah we're gonna find some extra banana logic <laughs> not to be confused with a banana republic all right so jump cross is an interesting function. And then, yeah, we've got, this is what is interrupting our uh, our user controls. They become immortal, that's good. Because remember there are certain enemies in the game uh, and Khan and Eric had already set it up where if you hit a rocket and shot into the air, you're moving so fast, you wouldn't actually die if you hit one of those enemies. So they're re uh, reactivating that system and then the banana does get removed from the platform, right? So you can only hit the banana once, nice. So this jump cross method, I think, is gonna be uh, really, really interesting. Okay, so let's look at it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, go, here we are. Okay, jump cross. So your velocity Y is the opposite of your jump speed because you've been going down probably. So you're going down at some speed and then, uh, oh, actually that doesn't, you could be going up. That actually doesn't really matter, I guess, because sometimes you shoot left, sometimes you shoot right. So that kind of creates the, um, the variance there. And then you speed up a little bit with this 1.2 times multiplier. Uh, and then if, let's see, so if the current is player state dot left, so what is H axis input? This I'm, I'm kind of interested in here. And then if it's right, so there's a negative or positive 0.7 something. Let's see what H axis input does. I don't even know if this was in the original game or not. Uh, H axis input jump speed. This is probably just an update, yep. Uh, 
horizontal, I'm sure H means, but I'm not sure what the input means. Move left. This does seem to be all over the game. So I think this was an existing thing. I think this is the, oh, I see, input. This was if you're pressing left or right, then it would, you know, if you're pressing left, then the horizontal axis in input would be probably a negative Y value. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And they're locking this in because also inputs have been interrupted. Ah, I like it. Nice, nice, nice. Um, and then I want to find the spinning part as well. It might be in the update method of, of the player. So if moving down, all right, so if, there it is. Yep, the angle is constantly changing every frame. So if you are in the kind of locked state, then your angle is always updating. And that angle is a special uh, flame value, I'm guessing. Let's actually find out. Yeah, it must be, because nothing else is happening with it here. OK, nice. So folks, I think this was a really neat um, implementation, you know, the, the game ended up being really quite cool. And I'm going to just run it one more time. And the code's all like pretty approachable. You know, they did a nice job, uh, you know, really clean implementation of this. And the diff is not that bad. I mean, I'm sure it took a while to kind of figure it out and fine tune and identify all the right places to actually put those changes we just looked at. <laughs> Look at it. That's so good. Oh, yeah. Where's the part where the uh, is prohibited becomes? Oh, it's just if you're moving down, then is prohibited is false. And that's what immediately. Uh, so the angle is both reset. Very nice. And then the spinning stops because now is prohibited control is false. Great. That's it. Um. In the chat, Kevin asks, this is a game? What is the idea? So, Kevin, if you missed the Doodle Dash challenge in 17 Days of Flutter, I am going through some submissions that community folks put together and sent in and admiring their great work. So that is the game, and that is the idea. All right, nice job, Kong Nguyen Tan which again, I really hope I'm saying close to correctly. Uh, next, let's move on. So the next game I got, oh, was this person one of the, I wanna be able to give credit to this person, but I got their GitHub and I can't remember where it came from. All right, I'll come back to that one because Martin Trollope, I know I got, uh, his GitHub on Twitter. And he's got a really nice link for us to use here. So, but I don't remember actually what Martin's game does. So oh, let's open with a Flutter run. <clears throat> there appears to be one starred question. Eunice asks, how to listen to two gesture events, list scroll and pinch at the same time. Uh, that's a good question. So only one thing would escape the arena. I think there would have to be some very custom low level stuff here. Um, and there's a follow up question. My case is I have a screen that contains a scrollable list of text and the text can change the scale when the user pinches in or when the user pinches to zoom in or out with two fingers. But the problem is that it only listens to one of the scrolls. Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, I, I think you may need to look into potentially... Well, we'll have to look into this, but I think you might need like a custom gesture arena, which could be extensible, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, 
I, I have vague memories of hearing that that could be extended on its own. You are welcome. Great submission, great work, nicely done. Uh, all right, we're on to Martin Trollops and we're gonna go with Dash this time. Oh, right, I keep thinking, oh no, I don't want more difficulty. I definitely don't want more difficulty. I keep thinking that uh, I just click this and it's gonna start the game. That's not how it works. Okay, so Martin, Tra oh, we've got a, a hat here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it. I don't know the impact of the hat. We are just scooting, though. Wow, what a power up. Okay, so it's a power up because we just flew up forever and ever and ever. And that is a, oh, wait. Well, now I'm going down. What's happening? I think it must reduce gravity because each. Yeah, it, it seems like this is kind of like a moon gravity situation. Is it uh, a single effect? Yeah, this, this must reduce the rate at which gravity pulls down on dash, which makes a ton of sense, given that we are in outer space. So there's not so speed of gravity anyway. Uh, let me switch back to the live chat. OK, uh, oh, my favorite question. Get it off every time. What is the VS Code theme? The VS Code theme is Synthwave 84. And it's really good. Okay, let's look at how this was put together. Code, current directory. All right, so we've got a special hat. It's going to be somewhere in assets. Uh, Space.ping. Great. <clears throat> Armed with the knowledge of the asset itself, we can search for space.ping. And we'll see. So yeah, in the power up file. Yep, that makes sense. We definitely don't care about those ones. All right. So in powerup.dirt, we have this new astronaut class. Oh, yeah. Martin was the one who has a really helpful link that he sent that is the full diff of their change. But I'm just going to sleuth around anyway. This is fun. Uh, all right. So there's a new astronaut class that extends power up. And let's remind ourselves what the base power up class does. So it extends sprite component. It has game ref. And of course, it can bump into things. It has its own hitbox. The hitbox is added for us. And that is the extent of the power up. So it is, this is a nicely designed base class because it's it's pretty clear here that all you have to do is implement on collision. And possibly you don't even implement it because it might go into the players on collision. And actually, as we scroll down here, that does look to be the thing. So we do have some uh, ooh, gravity reduction. Yeah, we were I was sleuthing it out correctly. So on collision actually not even implemented here, but this is now just a new variable type that can be checked for in the player class. So on top, we'll go to it's on collision. Here it is typed very poorly by yours truly. And we expect to find as we scroll down, looking for an astronaut. All right, so. There's not a lot of changes that happen here, right? The Dash or Sparky, they don the astronaut helmet. That's great. So a new state has been added. Uh, and the current variable, this is a magic thing from the sprite group component or something like that. Oh, wow, those are the exact words, sprite group component, great. Uh, so current basically says which of the different sprites is, is you know, to be rendered currently. So Dash or Sparky don the uh, the astronaut hat, the space suit, and then the space suit is removed from outer space. And then we're on the clock to lose this power up after active length in milliseconds, which is 10 seconds. <clears throat> now, I still have not found the gravity reduction part. So let's... Okay, so gravity reduction is not handled in player.dart. So let's see where it is. Oh. 
Well, that's interesting. It's only set on, oh, I didn't even notice that gravity reduction originated from the power-up. But I'm not going to lie. I really expected to see this variable used somewhere else. Does anyone have any ideas for how this could be happening? <laughs> how is gravity reduction not used anywhere? Uh, what's the main update? Let's go back to player.update and remind ourselves how this works. Oh, well, that is just a zombie attribute, a whole gravity reduction. I think at some point that must have been an idea that someone had. I don't know if it was added by Martin or if it was in the original game, because this is a zip download from GitHub and not a Git checkout. So there's no Git history for uh, Git extensions to tell me anything. No Git blame available, but at any rate, here we go. Gravity reduction is a dead end. Long live gravity modifier. <laughs> and then gravity modifier must be used. Yep, right here. Great. Okay. And then, so I think that was it for that one. There's floating spacesuits. Dash or Sparky can hop into one of those spacesuits. Then they have less gravity. And then after 10 seconds, they lose the gravity modifier and they go back to falling like normal. I think that's right. Okay. Uh, Nimesh asks, what is my extension for folder icons? Yeah, that's a really fun one, honestly. Um, every single file gets its own icon based on what it is. And what's it called? Um, it's probably literally called like file icons. But I don't know. VS Code icons. That's what it is right there. And it will make your development experience more delightful. I highly recommend it. Okay. All right. Well done. That was a great one. I loved it. And was it on the thing? Oh, here we go, Martin Trollope. Yep, and uh, we can see there Martin in their spacesuit. Not Martin. That's <laughs> not Martin. That's Sparky. Uh, okay, cool. Next one. We're two down. So let's go back a layer. Look at what we're dealing with. Ah, um, mo 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 mo. Who's often watching the stream and a great member of the Flutter community, and who uh, whose name I always am very worried that I'm saying incorrectly. Well, I'm definitely saying it incorrectly right now because there's no way he says his name like his mouth is full of mashed potatoes. Um, but I hope we meet at a Flutter event one day, and I hear you pronounce your name, and then I can also pronounce it correctly. Um, but for now, we're going to look at your great work. Flutter run. <clears throat> Let's look at some questions in the chat. <laughs> Islam Kuja asks, where can I find the 3D Dash game that was demonstrated at Flutter Forward? Uh, that was a highly custom build of the Flutter engine as well and is basically not yet widely available. Um, much of what was happening at Flutter Forward was designed to be, you know, just a preview of what's to come, but not at all something that's ready yet, if that makes sense. Uh, so that one not yet available, but hopefully coming soon. Like Leah, who did that presentation, she literally had, she worked with uh, engineers who work every day on the engine to get a custom build just on her machine that literally did not exist on anyone else's laptop other than hers and probably, you know, the engine team that helped her install it. Uh, so very cutting edge. Um, I think the next one here, how are the UI toolkit, e.g. Flutterflow created the logic behind it? Whoa. Well, that's a huge one. 
they're created. I mean, they're just themselves immensely complicated apps with, um, you know, I, I could only guess and gesture at how they're, I think a street sweeper is going by my house right now. So I apologize if there's a bunch of background noise. But uh, they're just enormously complicated apps that either have relational data stores or document data stores behind them that describe the entire state of everything that's been configured. It sounds like there's literally an airplane landing on the street in front of my house. I'm guessing you can all hear it. It's really unfortunate. <laughs> all right, we've obviously got to go with the duck hunt variant of the game here. I'm going to make sure I'm actually not blocking it, which I may have been doing on previous ones. Okay, duck hunt. Okay, so we are flying up and I want to find, figure out what. So we, we obviously just have this delightful character. I'm wondering if there are additional mechanics to this. Um, I do like that we're changing the state back and forth a lot. <clears throat> um, oh, my gosh, I almost missed. Like this kind of, it's a really nice interactive look here. Uh, oh, it changed again off the bounce. And they both wear the hat. Oh gosh, that's really nice. Also, really surprising capabilities of that hat. Two people put on one hat. We see that hat. <laughs> how, do you, how does it work? All right, so I think what we have here is, and I want to get a little bit higher just to be sure. Um, I know some of these, you know, there's like different mechanics that start at different levels. Those are the enemies, by the way, that you have to avoid and that lead to the, oh, I hit one. I don't know if it came through on the stream, but I hit one. Uh, those enemies are why there's the is immortal flag in the code. Uh, all right. So, hey, we got him. Greetings. Yes, Craig. Please send me a recording of how you say your name. I don't want to keep butchering it. So that was pretty great. Let's go to the main menu and see if there's anything different on the dash side. Everything looked a little squished. Is anyone else noticing that? I'm sure it was done on purpose, but like dash is just really kind of compressed now. This is different than the other ones. I'm like, all right. Um, let's see how this hat. Uh, oh, well, there's probably just different sprites for the hat. They're really nicely designed. Check out the code difference in this game. And by the way, if I'm missing anything, uh, yeah, great. Uh, if I'm missing anything in your um, in your game that you implemented, uh, you know, type it in the chat. Let me know. But let's look at the implementation. So I'm going to start in assets again. Yeah, we see we've got duck hunt, duck hunt center, duck hunt hat. Honestly, incredibly well done. <laughs> Train of thought says Dash is on a diet. <laughs> That is a cruel diet. Um, I guess you could say Dash has been eating like a bird. Look at these are great. So a lot of assets had to go in here because there's different directions for the duck hunt graphic, and then they need to be able to wear a hat. So just this one idea added six, if I'm counting right. Um, yeah, there's center, left, right, and then hat on, off. So all these permutations had to be added. Very cool. Um, the game as mouth. Oh, the same as mouth, but with the latest. Maybe I read that right. So let's see how this came to be. In the lib directory. Uh, I think we basically, if we go to the player, not darn't. Let's see. Yeah, character name, left, right, 
hats. Oh, yeah. So, oh, right. There was already all of these for the hat. Um, we just kind of had to hold serve essentially. And then, yeah, you have all the different states and whatnot. Okay. Very nice. Now, there was also a different theme for the home screen. I want to check that out again, real quick. Let's run this one more time. Different theme for the home screen. Uh, I don't even know how to find the home screen. Main menu overlay. That's probably it. So the game is launching. Yeah, we've got a different theme. And it looks nice. So in our main menu overlay, you know, I don't really know what these things were before. So this actually may be a slightly anticlimactic investigation. Yeah, where's the theme? Maybe, maybe all the way up at the top. Okay, we've got a material, the theme. Yeah, where does that theme come from? I must have edited the theme separately. I don't know where that is. Is there a theme file? There isn't. There is color schemes, Dot Dart. All right, I'm guessing that values here have changed. Nice. Oh, here we go. Got the from the Material 3 theme generator. Great. Well, I hope that was a pleasure to use. But yeah, nice. There we go. OK, cool. Well done on Duck Hunt. And again, remember, if I missed anything in your um, implementation, then uh, type it in the chat. Let us know. All right, we're moving on. How's everyone doing, by the way? What were folks most excited by at Flutter Forward? I'd love to hear what you're all most excited to use. Obviously, some 3D stuff. There was already a question about um, how to access it. All right, next was Mims Manager, who is on the screen. He's on the main screen, I believe. Yeah. Nims Manager. Let's see. Wait, why didn't that take me to their actual? OK, we've got a link error here. NIMSMGR, Twitter. NIMSMGR. Nimesh Magar, different than Nims Manager. <laughs> uh, Nimesh. Hey, you're here. You're in the chat. Wonderful. Uh, let's look at your game changes. Where'd it go? Oh, yeah. A uh, CD, Nimesh, Magar, and run. <laughs> Dad, I told you I was up to something good. Come on. You got the last laugh, Nimesh. I'm excited to see what you did. Let's see what's in the, the preview. Um, OK, so there's a shield power up and a lot of different coloration here. OK, I'm going to move this back to the window where I'm doing this, move it out from behind my head, and let's do it. All right, we're going flying up here's here's a little tip for everyone by the way if you're ever coding something for a challenge like this and it has levels add a way for the judges to cheat i want everyone to write this down because it's the most important thing you'll hear today <laughs> if you want to win coding challenges uh I was a judge for the puzzle challenge last year or whenever it was, um, along with many other people on the team because there were a ton of submissions that were very cool. Goodness, I lost. How terrible. Uh, NIMS MGR. OK, thank you for the clarification. NIMS MGR. Um, <clears throat> Ooh, tech is to ask, what is the use of observable? Is it state management? No, it's just you observing me. And, and I have a Flutter shirt on. That's it. 
just cheeky little name. There certainly are observables in the Flutter SDK though. Okay, so cheating, really important because it takes a long time to get to the end of the game. And if you've added changes to the end of the thing or a, like a later level or something, then the judges may have to play your game for a really long time just to find the thing. Uh, I yeah, was a judge for the puzzle challenge. And you know, I also just kind of don't really like those little sidey puzzle challenges. Uh, so that was also kind of my personal hell. But there were th so many really, really, really good submissions. And they would be like, you know, the first level does this, the second and third level do that, the fourth level. Why did I fall through that thing? All right, I'm just adding a way to cheat. I can't do it anymore. Like the fifth level is when it gets crazy. And it's like, I'm actually not good at solving side puzzle challenges. And you know, now I have to play this game for an hour to, <laughs> to see what you packed into the fifth level. Uh, so I highly recommend adding a way to cheat. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So that was, I think, common. Yes. Right. Here we go. Jump. Okay. Like if you've got, you know, five levels and there's something really cool you want the judges to see on level five, just let me press control five and jump to level five or something. It's uh, super, super important. All right. I'm going to run it again now that I can cheat. I suspect that there are things later in the game that we need to see. Oh, here we go. Yep. The shield starts at level four, just before the enemy level. Well, we are going to get to level four easier than you've ever imagined. <laughs> there we go. I'm just holding down the up arrow key, flying up to level four where things will get juicy. Here we go. Once again, we're flying up to level four. All right, got a power up. That'll get us level four faster. So I don't know what level we're on. Okay, a rocket. Oh, actually, so the... <laughs> The jumping defeats the purpose of the rocket. Wait a minute. I'm not seeing the... Oh, there was a shield power-up. Yeah, I've got to actually catch the next one. I was worried that I had downloaded the wrong code here, but I saw the shield. Give me a shield. Oh, gosh, I hope I didn't pass the only two. Oh, boy. All right. Let's look at the implementation, and when we find it, we'll make shields be everywhere. You're not going to be able to go outside without tripping over a shield. That's my plan. So, class shield. How do you spell shield? Not how I spelled it, apparently. Uh, okay, so here's a shield. And we're going to look at where the one is added. Here we go. Oh, there's two things here. What's going on? We can add a shield. Oh, and they're added to the power-ups list. Sure. Okay. So else if the platform special is shields equals true. So that's like what level we're on. Right. Yeah. No, not doing that at all. So instead, we're going to add shields all the time. I guess we need a lot of shields. And this would be totally banana so we will add one every you know with like 10 percent probability or something that'll be every frame so there's just there's gonna be a junkyard of shields okay i promise you, you wouldn't be able to go outside without tripping over a shield and i am a man of my word i intend for there to be a lot of shields good night sir knight or madame knight I don't know which one. All right, Sparky, put your steel-toed boots on because you're about to stub your toe on some shields. All right. Oh, get it, get it, get it. All right. Okay, so it lasts briefly. You shoot up into the air and... Shoot up into the air and change color a bit. 
so Sparky uh, directly turns gray. All right, cool. But let's look at this from the perspective of, oh, now I actually like, there's so many shields I can't even stop. <laughs> I can't avoid them. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to be able to use. All right, let's play again as, no, that's not what I wanted. Uh, okay, let's just die. I don't think again. How do we go back to the main screen? Does anyone know how to go back to the main screen? Because <laughs> I... Hmm. I don't know how to go back to the main screen. Escape? Enter? Okay, here's a way to go back to the main screen. Let's look at some questions. <clears throat> ah, la, la. Fun with friends. You are asking that question over and over and over again. The repeating of the questions is um, not necessary. All right, so here we are as Dash. Can I still cheat in this? And cheat. I added that to the last one. Okay, points for uh, Nimesh for adding the ability to cheat. They left it in, and I'm very happy about that. Here is, oh, let's grab that shield. Get it. Hey, look at that. Nice. Oh, it's a really short-lived. So you're kind of briefly immune, but you are flying up for a while. Nice. Okay. Good stuff. Um, now, by the way, fun with friends. That's a good question. Uh, I've used Python and Dart for backends. I've not used ServerPod, even though it's obviously Dart. I've used Vanilla and Dart. And I've not really used much Golang. Golang is going to be a very mature experience. Uh, ServerPod, I think, recently had a big release, so it may also be quite mature. But you'll have to play with them both and report back. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's look at how this was done. So we saw the shield... Maybe add power up. Yep. So I've added more shields. And then everything is probably going to be in the player file where we're going to, in on collision, get some special things if the other, because remember that's the name of the parameter that is passed into on collision. So whatever, whatever you bumped into, who's the other guy or gal? And if you don't have a power up and the other thing is a shield then you get the shield left right center uh switch and you the shield is removed from parent same thing everywhere um and then you get a nice jump very cool very cool um oh namesh also says reload is the only option oh right shift r i didn't need to kill the app i could have just done shift r in the terminal Duh. and Explaining the power mainly, it protects the enemy collision death. Protects, uh, protects from enemy collision death. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Well, another great one. Let's see what we got next. <laughs> Readable background. All right. Uh, you, I don't remember which of these letters went together. Like, presumably, the first name isn't USA, and then the second, the middle name is some of these letters. Are you on the, on the sheet? Oh, here we go. Usama. Awesome. Usama, I hope you're here. About to enjoy your fame and fortune. Fame and fortune, not guaranteed. So let's CD into Usama's directory and run the game. And we're gonna read some chat messages. Hmm. A Google user. How do you like using Google, by the way? I've heard mixed things. Is it good? Anyway, a Google user says, can you recommend an approach architecture for a high performance algorithm? The game launched and covered where I'm reading. 
Algorithm for computation tasks or visualization? I've got a very short but unsatisfying answer. No, because I don't know much about visualization. It also would depend on what you want to visualize. Um, that is, you know, probably going to highly impact how you do that. Okay. Oh, yeah, let's make it bigger. Hey, hey. all right. Uh, we're going to start as dash. Oh, what happens on this one? You turn into an angel. Oh, incredible. I'm excited to see this. Okay, we've jumped. Oh, can I cheat? Ah, oh, I can cheat. Yes. Thank you. Sama, without even hearing the golden wisdom, you just did it on your own. Left the cheating turned on. Okay. Going, 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 going. Oh, could you imagine, right? Imagine if this was the slide puzzle. And right now we were trying to figure out like how to get the fat square through the skinny tunnel just to see the, uh, the additions to the game. Maybe I should hit one of these power-ups. I wonder if that's how you actually get this. Oh, there it was. Grab it. <laughs> oh, no. There was an angel of death. <laughs> angel took me right to an early grave. Uh, nice, though. Okay. Well, I think we saw how it looks, and uh, let's check out the implementation. Also, I'm going to look at some chat. Uh, huh, huh, huh. A non-hater says, what is the future of Flutter in terms of games, web, and desktop apps? Yes. Yes, and all the above. Uh, Flutter is coming for all the things. In fact, it might already be here. All right, so there's an angel. Let's see if that's what it's called. Not called an angel. But somehow Simon Lightfoot is, <laughs> Dev Angels London is in the uh, generated things here. Well, that's funny. Huh. I wonder, oh, the author's file. Oh. Well, he certainly is a contributor. Okay, so it's not called an angel. And let's look at assets and see if we can find the new asset. Uh, where is this? Rocket, platform, Mugler, Lovebird. Oh, Lovebird. I wasn't going to guess that. All right, but we can now search for lovebird. Ping. Here's a little trivia question for you all. What does PNG stand for? A Google user out there, no Googling it. Off the top of your head. First one to answer in the chat gets an applause. What does PNG stand for? But anyway, we're loading a wait. A final boy equals game ref load sprite lovebird. Oh. Okay, so we get all the sprites in there. Literally no one has an answer to the... Oh, there we go, Eric. Portable network graphic. Nice. If someone asked me what does JPEG stand for, I wouldn't have a clue. I have no idea. All right, so... Right, we're loading the Lovebird, and then we're going to have... Wow, I thought I was going to see... Let's look at Power Up. That's, whoops. Power Up, not Dart. Where's our new one? Nugler hat. Happy Boy Power Up. And Okay, so now we're going to look for the where the Happy Boy Power Up is added. Without a slash. Here we go. Wait, no. Uh, I was expecting to see it. Uh, okay, it must be here. Yeah, so it's created. Oh, use of var. Look at that. I'm very bold. Joint photograph expert group. There is the optional E in there. Oh. 
what does JPEG stand for? Joint Photographic Experts Group. Nice. Very nice. I didn't have a clue. Nary a clue. All right. So we add the Happy Boy Power Up into a random place. I think we know how this goes. We go over to player. We look at their on collision. If they are, if the player is bumping in to the Happy Boy Power Up, then they become happy and held by the happy boy or some such and they jump and i don't know if they're immune though i'm not seeing a lot of immunity which is i think why all oh, right it was an angel of death for me it just ferried me right into an enemy and summarily ended the game louis asks what is other in the if statements well in flame you can get this on collision method by adding the collisions uh collision callbacks mix in to a component so this is a fancy component which means it can have a collision callbacks mix in added and then that allows us to override this on collision method and whenever two objects bump into each other they each have their on collision method called and into each object's on collision method is passed whatever the other thing that they bumped into was named other. And there it is. DApps had a much more succinct answer. It is the other thing that it collided with. Yep. Uh, <laughs> All right, very nice. Very good. So I skipped one. I think we just got to the end, except I skipped this one because I was trying to remember their name and where I got their code from because I'm not seeing it here. And I, oh, I watched. Oh, wait, is it? Is it this person? De Bruyne? It is Cameron De Bruyne. Yeah, because I was like, I, I played this one. This is the one that I ran on my own to make sure, but then I stopped, to make sure that they ran. Okay, Cameron De Bruyne. Awesome. We're going to do uh, your game now. I don't know how I got this name. I'm not going to lie. I think it maybe was in an email or something. All right. Let's run the game. And look at questions. <clears throat> All right, there's some starred ones. Folks have tagged. I'm reading those real quick. Uh, E-Developer asks whether or not there are any resources to learn Flame and Forge 2D. I don't have those resources, but I would go to udemy.com and definitely show up in an like, incognito window if you're not getting that you know, because they're always having a fake sale that ends in like six hours. And the sale's not ending. It's eternal. Um, but, you know, you do want to you want to buy in the fake sale. Anyway, they will have really, really good resources on Flame and Forge 2D. If that was on my learning list, that's where I would go. All right, quickly, other... Um, Train of Thought says, do we need the GitLens, uh, GitLens Pro to enable GitBlame, or is there any other extension for that? I, I use GitLens to see GitBlame things all the time, and um, I don't have any Pro thing. So we should be okay. Let's look at my extensions for this. I think it's just Git Lens, right? Yeah, right here, Git Lens. Works, works great. No, I don't want to open. Go away. Go away. Uh, 
da, da. Okay. We're back. So, how did this work? We haven't played it yet. We don't know. Let's run the game. Okay. Oh, we found, <laughs> we found it. The effect. Oh, so I love this. Okay, I'm realizing what's going on here. I didn't even fully appreciate this earlier. So the UFO was an asset that Khan and, and the team released uh, like on a weekend, I think, as part of kind of, oh, now I'm screwed. Oh, really lucked in. Apparently, there's a platform just off the screen. I'm, I'm in a bit of a pickle here. And now we're dead. Um, the UFO was... Oh, I'm not good at this game. <laughs> can I cheat? Ah, I can cheat. I'm so happy. So the UFO was released by Khan and others as a weekend prompt for this very coding challenge and it's what i used on the last observable flutter and the the live boring show with Khan, where we were having the ufo shoot lasers and this person uh cameron has stuck with that ufo asset and they've oh whoa we found a little uh little bug there where we were we became a disembodied egg uh, but they have used this this asset, found another one that really goes nicely with it, or made this, I don't know, uh, and then have a pretty funny little egg <laughs> thing that Dash or Sparky turn into. Uh, and they just kind of abduct you slowly up into space. That's great. That's pretty good. So I kind of want to see, there's kind of be, I'm guessing this is all one big asset. Oh, no, it's not one big asset, because we saw the egg kind of break off and disconnect, which I presume had to have been a bug. Uh, but it did prove that that is not just one ping. So let's see how this looks. Um, assets. This is proven to be a good place to look first in the past. I'm looking at the wrong code. What's going on here? Assets, egg, yes, standalone, <laughs> and very high quality. Look at this egg. That's great. Uh, nice. All right, where's the UFO? Here we go. So there's UFO awake. Interesting, as opposed to asleep. And then here's the UFO setting a trap nice uh looks like the rest of them i think oh, what's mega dash i haven't noticed that before i don't know what this is so let's how it works so in for ufo awake dot ping platform so oh, I put this in platform as well, and it was a bad decision for me. Now, they actually did. It's a good decision in this one. I actually agree with Cameron's decision of uh, to put the platform here because I, you know, they're actually having a collision with this thing matter, which is the whole point of the platform. Whereas for me, it was just terrible laziness because all, all my UFO did was shoot lasers. Anyway, so there's different states, awake and trap. And the, I think we're going to find some interesting code here, honestly, because these things, it's not just one asset. It's two objects that are going to be being driven together, kind of kept together in application code. So I think this one's going to be pretty interesting. So first of all, let's look at player and it's on collision and see what happens when it bumps into an enemy what the heck was it called? An enemy follower platform, which is the UFO. 
or is it a, um, a follower? Yeah. Somehow I missed this. I think I was just probably looking in the wrong place or something. Okay, so if you're not stunned and the other is an enemy follower platform, then you become stunned. Makes sense that you can't be double stunned. That would that'd be crazy talk. And then when you're stunned, all right, let's look at update and see if stunned comes into play. Uh, here we go. So if you're stunned, then your position gets the tiniest. Ah, so it just slows you down. It's a 90% reduction on your speed. Otherwise, you keep moving at the normal pace. All right. Let's now look at the object manager and see if we can find the code that keeps these things together. And then I think we'll have done it. Oh, this is interesting. So enemy followers, you know what? Actually, I'm not going to lie. I never understood this map. And I still don't. I don't know why these are like true versus false. Uh, yep. I've never understood the special platforms map. And I continue to not understand it. All right. Enable specialty. Oh, it's because we're currently on the first level. And so we're going to set these other things to true as we move through the game. Oh. OK, I get it. What were we looking for? Oh, look, yeah, here you go. OK, enable level specialty. All right. Configure, we want to find in update. Maybe add enemy follower. Huh. I don't know where the code is that keeps these things together because it wasn't in. Yeah, it's of course not in the enemy follower platform itself. And it's not in the player. The player does slow down, but we don't see any movement in the platform. That's not a thing that we see here. And then in the object manager, enemy follower, enemy followers. Okay, all right. Maybe here we go. Maybe add enemy follower. Oh, let's see if this. Uh, no. They're just added, and oh, I don't know where this code is, and I really do want to find it. Hmm. Clean up enemy followers. That's not going to be it. A lot of cleanup. <clears throat> Generate an X. Huh. The thing, I'm just wondering, like, how far you have to zoom out? Not this far, huh? All right, well, that that code is currently escaping me. I don't know where it is. I'm not seeing anything that would seem to do it. Platforms increase score, clean up platforms, maybe add, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, let's look at the player's different states and make sure I didn't, I don't have some wrong assumptions here. Uh, so egg, oh, stunned gets its an egg. All right, so let's, let's look for player state dot stunned because I think whatever code drives these together may have to, Interrogate that. Here we see if stunned. Yeah, we knew about that one. Oh, okay. Is stunned. We can also look for. So let's, is stunned. Huh. Okay, there's a lot of stuff here for is stunned. All right, let's check this out. 
The world is in black hole. Ooh, I hope not. Here we go. Current stun. What are we in here? Is collision. I don't know. It is in black hole. Is this new to this? Is this Cameron's or is this in the game? Was this in everyone's? Kong thinks it's going to be in object manager. Oh, yeah. We certainly could look for is stunned now, but it's. I also don't know this world in is in black hole. I'm curious about whether or not that's part of this game or not. So continuing to look for is stun. If you're not stun okay, so you can't get a nuclear hat when you're stunned. That's good. If you're wearing a hat and more stunned checks. Yeah. Am I reading this right? If you're stunned, then the H axis input is plus equal the moving right input. Otherwise, it's the same thing. I, I do this all the time. I have some idea it's going to be different. Never get back to it. <laughs> oh boy, have I done that a lot. All right. So, yeah. So I'm not seeing it. I'm going to read chat for a bit and see if any of you have any ideas about where this might be. Um, hmm. Yeah, Kong had said, I think it's in the object manager. I thought so too, but I don't see it with my eyeballs or anything else. Well, I think I might have to give up on this one. Wait a minute. I wonder if I have, let's see here. Did we get source code? Uh, no, because I asked last night and it was too late. Yeah, I think we don't have source code for this, if I'm remembering right. No, we have source code. I'm looking at it. Where did I get it? Oh, it was in an email. Where is that email? Pardon, folks, while I. Television, while I look at my other screen and don't find it. Wait, 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 wait. Here it is. Ah, nope. Yeah, the game that we got was just a zip. So I don't think there is, I don't think we have Git history for this. Yeah. All right. Well, I was thinking I might be able to reverse this or find the repo or look at some commits and actually figure out how the UFO and the player were moving in sync together. Um, but man, yeah, it's just escaping me. Normally I don't, when I'm looking for something like this, it's, it's pretty rare that I just can't find it um, because it isn't magic. There are lines of code in here that do this. And you'd think that, you know, it's kind of this simple sleuthing around would find them, but it seems to not be. Yeah, the update method of the UFO, that's kind of what's interesting. The update method of the UFO, or sorry, they, I'm just thinking about what, what are all the things that could move the UFO? It can only be moved by itself or presumably like the game which has a pointer to it. And so the object manager was a really good place to look. And I mean, there's still decent odds that it's in here and I'm just overlooking it. But, hmm. I think I'm going to declare defeat on this one uh, because I'm, yeah, I'm not seeing where it would be. This is all the kind of generic code. Yeah, I've looked at this a bunch of times. Maybe add 
but there's nothing in here to move any of these things. You know, there's no method that's like move the UFOs. The only other thing is, does this inherit on something that I've overlooked from in platform? So platform has move. Okay, here we go. But the platforms only move in the X axis, right? They drift left and right. Whereas the UFO will move up and down. And that is not in this code, you know? That is just not in this code. There's no effect on the Y value of position. So it's not coming from the top. And if we look at enemy platform itself, it, you know, we've just been staring at this. There is no, um, oh, wait a minute. I never looked at, I never found this trap. Well, that's interesting. Trap. All right, where are we? So current is colliding. So the only thing that the UFO can collide with is uh oh that's interesting. Is colliding and just become and then the size changes a little bit. Oh, I feel like we're close. Aren't we close? We have to be. We have to be. Uh Looking at chat again. The UFO moves with the player as well, no? Yeah, that's what I'm that's exactly what I'm trying to figure out is what code drives that. How how is that happening? Something has got to be moving the UFO up because that's what was happening in the game. Find a UFO to remind ourselves even how it works. We know what code we're looking for here. And see, it's moving up with the player and it moves left and right with the player. So they become bound in some way and they don't, they don't detach from each other until you start moving down, but I'm currently cheating. So we're just staying together. I'm pressing the up arrow key, but I'm going to release it. We lose our velocity and then dash kind of detaches. Oh, that was interesting. It's kind of like different look at that these things will abduct whatever they want these greedy aliens can we abduct look at that they abducted the All right. Shoot. okay yeah nice they abducted the trampoline what else can they abduct they do abduct each other as well. That's why when you're when you're tagged and you get to one, then it kind of joins in. Ooh, let's see how it works with this power up. We're stunned, so we can't have a power up. But it did look like the rocket flew off on its own. <laughs> yeah, what are we gonna do? Can we abduct the phone? Yeah, nice. Read their text messages. Yeah. Read their email. They have password protection on. Interesting. So I think that's coming from the fact that the UFO, the enemy follower platform, and it's on collision, it doesn't seem to check what it's colliding with. It just says if is colliding, which is coming from, ah, so yeah, it's just, are you colliding with anything? This is from deep in the flame framework itself. So if the UFO is colliding with anything, the a phone, a trampoline, dash, other UFOs, then it moves into the trap state. So there's got to be something about this trap state which impacts other things around it. So let's continue to look for trap. Are you careful? What's your trap? All right, trapity trap. Trap, trap, trap. Hmm. Wow, really not, not mentioned. 
Hmm. A lot of ideas. The trail has gone cold. Yeah. I mean, the only other thing, like, there's no way someone would in investigate the size, right? Right? But that's the only other way I can tell that something could, that other code even could know that this was happening and then be like, oh, we need to move into this other behavior set. Yeah. If that's what it is, that's not what it is. That's that's just crazy. Anyway, well, folks, we uncovered how almost all the games work and played some pretty fun modifications. And yeah, I think it was pretty good. I'm going to close by putting my screen to sleep. I love to do that. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> uh, by reading some questions. Um, let's see. Adam asks, Craig, I see in Flutter Forward 3D game, so Dart supports 3D natively render, or they use the package to render the 3D dash. Yeah. Uh, that was all native. Yeah, that that is coming to Flutter. The new Impeller rendering engine, originally conceived of to improve the early animation jank in iOS, uh, is just also capable of rendering 3D stuff. And there's going to be... Actually, I don't know how finalized the API is, but in the extremely cutting-edge build that Leah used during the keynote, there was a scene widget that lives in your widget tree just like normal. And it's kind of like a viewport into a 3D world. So everything around that widget is going to be conventional Flutter stuff. And in the 3D widget, you know, you kind of that viewport again, right, into where all the 3D things are. What those APIs look like and whatnot, I, I don't know at all yet. Um, but that is how that seems like it's going to work. All right, continuing to read some questions. Uh, Cigar says it would be so great if you could have a video on some industry level Flutter code, like best practices for Flutter. That's an interesting idea. Hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. We could have folks on this very show to talk about uh, how they architect, you know, Felix from VGV has wanted to, um, you know, he, he's said a few times he wants to come on and I, Felix, I want to have you uh, on the show. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's one of the, probably the most established folks out there in terms of, you know, having made and shipped a lot of Flutter apps. So, but there's different opinions too. So that's a really interesting idea. Um, Sekraz says, what's the most efficient way to officially work for not simply contribute to Flutter? Ooh. If you want to work for Flutter, then you need to work for Google. And I think the most efficient way to work for Google is to study for programming challenges. Get ready to pass the famous technical interviews. You also probably need to contribute first because uh, your application needs to make it past the like screeners and the, re the recruiters who try to make sense of the, the piles of, of applications that come in. And if you're applying for a SWE role, uh, which is SWE, software engineer. Uh, if you're applying to be a software engineer at Google to work on Flutter, having contributions on your application, on your resume to the Flutter repository would be a great start. Uh, I think that would definitely help you stand out. But then the next thing is to... Um, 
be ready to pass technical interviews, the live coding challenges. All right, folks. Uh, well, I think that's going to be a wrap on the uh, doodle dash challenge, at least on my end. I don't know if Khan had anything else planned up her sleeve, but that was pretty fun. Uh, only one implementation detail escaped me. And, you know, maybe with some more time, would have figured it out, but uh, just didn't seem like we were making good television. So I didn't want to keep poking around in the code for too much longer. But that'll be it for today's Observable Flutter. And uh, until next time, everybody, have a good one. <laughs>